kind of an invalid. I think that would be a very good idea. Forget the cider, Henry. Mr. Matthews is leaving. But I haven't finished my... You're finished as far as we're concerned. Here's the door. I'm sorry if I said anything. You're working for the defense, ain't you? That's right. Well, we're working for the prosecution. Was that Mr. Martin who called? That much I'll tell you, yes. And he said... Henry, you listen to this. And he said we wasn't to talk to nobody connected with the defense. But I only wanted to talk to your father for a minute. Grandpa? <laughs> he couldn't help you none. Why not? Well, he ain't seen anything for 20 years. He's blind. Why? Conrad Martin had started his counterattack. Everywhere in the neighborhood, I got the same answer. No statement for the defense. My last stop was the Hopkins house. Oh, hello, Davis. What are you doing here? Captain assigned me here. Hopkins gave me his key. I'd like to take a look around. I'm sorry, Mr. Matthews, but I can't let you in. Who told you that? Captain. I'd like to help you, but oh, I... Oh, I know, Davis. It's not your fault. Besides, I don't know what you'd find new inside. The lab boys gave the place a good going over, top and bottom. Did they look around back? What would they be looking for out there? That's a good question. Maybe I'll find a good answer. You big tall fella, ain't you, stranger? Huh? Are you talking to me? That cruise line kept you from falling, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. Hey, you're talking in the wrong direction. I'm over here. Oh, hi. You must be Mrs. Bell's father. That's right. How did you know that I was new around here? Oh, Murtis told you about me, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Don't bother me none. I've still got mighty good ears. The minute you started back here, I could tell you was a stranger. How could you tell? By the way you walked, I said to myself, <laughs> wait till he hits that bit of broken concrete. They all do, and you did. That's right. Say, did you hear about the shooting last night? Shooting? Yep. I was sitting right here listening to the radio. Saw the whole thing. You saw it? Yeah, uh, well, y you know what I mean. Mighty good set of ears. Did you tell anybody? Nope. Nobody asked me. But I heard these shots, and then about two minutes later, I was sitting... Grandpa, who are you talking to? Uh, uh, here she comes. Oh, it's you, is it? I thought I told you to leave us alone. Whoa. What's she done, Murtis? He's the man that Mr. Martin told us we couldn't talk to. I'm coming in and close your windows. I'm sorry, mister. I thought I'd found a friend. Yes, yeah, so am I, Grandpa. I thought I'd found an alibi. Conrad Martin was a man young in years and young in experience. He didn't intend to lose this case. Not only did you tell Mr. and Mrs. Bell and everyone else to withhold information, but then you give orders to keep me out of my client's house. I'm completely within my rights, Matthews. Your rights? I'd like to know what gives you the right to tell witnesses what to do. They don't belong to you any more than they do to me. I knew you were going to say that. I'm quite prepared. I think this will give you the answer. In the case of the People versus McCallum, Judge Dean of the Superior Court handed down the following opinion. That I'm not interested in Judge Dean's opinion. Now, whether you know it or not, there's a Supreme Court ruling that states that a witness is in the public domain, and as such, belongs exclusively to neither the prosecution nor the defense. Supreme Court? That's right. Where did you look that up? I didn't have to look it up. I learned it in law school. On oh, another thing, there's a matter of ethics. I withhold comment. 
Do you mind if I ask you a simple question? That all depends. What are you trying to prove? I'm going to win this case. Even if Hopkins is innocent? He's guilty and you know it. The evidence looks pretty circumstantial if you ask me. I didn't ask you. Then I'm telling you. Now, Conrad, I've seen a lot of eager beavers so anxious to win a conviction that they lose their case. What do you mean? I mean that it's your job and mine to see that people like Hopkins got a fair shake. Was Hopkins fair when he pumped two bullets into his wife? You're taking an awful lot for granted when you haven't even talked to a key witness. Witness? What witness? Why don't you wait until we get into court? You'll find out then. Wait a minute. What for? I... I had a couple of questions. I thought you had all the answers. Look, Bart, I... I I've got a tough job to do. The DA's away, and I... I feel it's my full responsibility to... to... To see that Hopkins gets a fair trial? Well... Yes. All right, then, get your hat. I've got a witness I want you to meet. Come back. Marquis ain't going to like that. I wouldn't worry about that, Grandpa. It's all been taken care of. Don't want her coming in here closing the window again. Can't see what's going on. Who's your friend? Never seen him before. Didn't you say he was blind? How did he know I was here? Simple. He saw you. He ain't as tall a man as you be, Mr. Matthews. And he's heavier set. That's right, Grandpa. I wonder if you'd tell us what... Mr. Matthews, if you want me to call the police, I'll... That won't be necessary, Mrs. Bell. Oh, Mr. Martin. Well, I was only doing what you told me to. Uh, Grandpa, a while back you started to tell me that you heard something right after the two shots. Just a second. Mertice, can I talk now? You can talk now. Well, sir, I was sitting right here listening to the news on the radio when I heard the two shots. First off, I thought they'd got the announcer. <laughs> but when he kept the talking, I knew it wasn't him. Go on. Then a couple of minutes later, I heard the screen door on Hopkins' back porch open and slam with a bang. And somebody come a-rushing down the back stoop. Oh, he was in an awful hurry. I knew he'd never been around here before because he hadn't gone more than two steps when he ran smack dab into the clothes pole. Did he say anything? Yep. Said, ouch. Did you say anything? Nope. He was off and around back before I could get a word out. Why didn't you tell this story before? Nobody asked me but Mr. Matthews, and Murky shut him up. Are you sure that wasn't Mr. Hopkins who came down those stairs? Why, of course I'm sure. First place, I know Mr. Hopkins. In the second place, Mr. Hopkins would know that Paul was there and duck under it. Now, where do we go? Well, I'd call the crime lab. What for? Has that pole been checked for fingerprints? I don't know. Why would they come out here in the first place? Last night, they didn't have a reason. Now they have. 